Hello everybody, I am Just Lance, and I would like to welcome all of you back for another video. Uh, as the title suggests, this is a best of video, so I'm not going to be shaving. Please excuse the scrub, I just have not had a chance to shave yet. Excuse me one second, I want to get a drink of water. Um, yeah, new subscriber, I'd like to give a shout out to a new subscriber. Um, it's a young person, the voice sounds like a young person. Um, I checked the subscriber. Uh, there are two videos, one of which um, shows an amulet shoot by, the other is of a younger person showing off their new lightsaber. Um, the name of the subscriber, well the name of the, um, the name on the subscription is I Live Vlad Wool, Wool, W-U-W. -W. Um, if you are a younger person. Welcome. I hope you learned something about wet shaving. Anyways, so welcome to you, Vlad. I'll just call you Vlad. Um, so welcome to you. Anyways, so this video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be showing my top 10 razors, and I have some honorable mentions, for 2017. Um, if the razor's not on my list, then either it didn't make the cut, or I just don't have it. This is razors that I personally own. Anyways, so without further ado, let's go ahead and move to the thing. No, no um, particular order. The first one here is... This one here. This is the 1967, either first or third quarter, I can't remember. Gillette Knack. Um, wonderful razor. This was a gift. This was this was um, a gift. Uh, wonderful long handle. It's plastic. Um, the TTO mechanism is up here on the neck. That's why I guess they call it a knack. They didn't want to call it a neck. So, but this is a great shaver. Um, really smooth, really just, I mean, mild, mild smooth shaver. I also have their, the British version. Um, if any of you know, is the British Knack also what's known as the, the Slim Twist over there? Um, um, Chris Morley, I know you're um, from the UK over there. Um, let me know. If anybody knows, let me know. Uh, but that's the 1967 Gillette Knack. I absolutely find that to be a, a wonderful shaver. I'll set it over here. The next razor is this one. This is a modern. This is the Merker 34C. This two-piece razor. Um, twist the knob, loosens, knob tightens. Wonderful razor, um, great shaver. Some call this a beginner razor, but I mean, I've been wet shaving since December of 2014, and this will always be in my rotation. It will always be part of my day, and it's a great razor. Um, one second. Um, yeah, that was the 34C. The next razor is this one. This is the 1940s Gillette Aristocrat, which is a twist to open. This is an absolutely incredible shaver. I absolutely love this razor. One really cool thing about this Aristocrat is here at the ends of the T-bar here, it's got like these little things here that kind of keep that blade from shifting around, which is a really nice, nice thing. This was also a gift. Um, I like that razor so much that I'm going to drop 119 bucks on it as soon as I get saved up to have it replated in Rodeo. There at Razor Emporium. Okay. Razor 4, next one is, and that was also given to me as well. And it is this one, the 1956, can't remember which quarter, 
1956 Gillette Red Tip Super Speed. This razor is just, I mean, I once heard Douglas Smythe say that Gillette did it right with the red tip. They should have just stopped. And you know what? Um, I agree with them. I agree with them. It's a great shaver. It it just, I mean, it got nice weight. The knurling pattern on it, this like, it's just this like checker handle. It's just great to hold on to. I absolutely dig that razor. The next one is a single edge. This is, I believe it's the 1920s. Jim Micromatic Open Comb. This takes the single edge blades, which look kind of like paint scraper blades. But I'll tell you what, if you've seen my video, The Beard Meets the Beast, it's where I took a goatee and mustache, where I had almost about 28 to 30 days worth of growth on it. And it just, I mean, it just went through it like it was nothing. The blade was brand new, but I mean, it just, it just plowed right through that, through that hair. And that is the 30s Micromatic. One second. Next razor is an adjustable. And it is my very first vintage adjustable. I ended up getting it from um, the gentleman uh, who went in and sent me a bunch of razors a while ago, uh, not long ago. And it is this one, the 1959 second quarter Gillette 195 adjustable. Either that or what we commonly call the Gillette or the E2 Gillette Fat Boy. You have adjuster right down here. Clicks one through nine. If you don't know anything about these old Gillette adjustables, are absolutely great, great, wonderful, wonderful razors. I absolutely get an amazing shave from that razor. Um, I wanted one for a while. I got one. It was just I absolutely love that razor. Okay, so and that was the Fat Boy. The next razor is a modern. It's one that I purchased. And I only paid 20 bucks for it, but it shaves really nice. And it's this one. The Razor Rock German 37 Slant. Um, bamboo handle. Or bamboo slant bar razor. This handle is 316 stainless steel, 16L stainless steel. This is a three piece razor. Opens like so. Um, slant razors are just great, efficient razors. Um, very smooth. That, that razor is very smooth, very efficient. Next razor is, I ended up winning it on the Clean Shavers channel in a giveaway. Um, thank you to my girl, wonderful girlfriend Cindy uh, recommending me, um, or nominating me. And it is this one. This is the Rockwell 6S Stainless Steel Safety Razor. It is a three piece, in case you're not familiar with this razor. Comes apart like that. And it has three of these plates. They look like that. They have an R and a number. They say Rockwell on both ends. And the way you know what your setting is, one plate is three, one three, the second is two four, and the third is five six. Why they didn't go one two, three four, five six, I don't know. Not my rate, you know, not my design, so. But the way you know is you look at it and down here when it's together. It'll have an R and a number, one through six, whatever that number is, that lets you know what setting you're on. Um, this razor, it's not highly polished, it is a matte finish, um, but it's just such a smooth, efficient shaver. I absolutely love it. I mean, I get a great shave from it every single time I, I pick it up. The next razor is one that I won from Warhawk. Or male over on Warhawk's world is this one. This is the 1940s 
Gillette Fat Handle Tech. Um, three piece razor comes apart. Put it in there. Drop the drop the blade over this linear bar. The little little nubs hold it in. Go ahead, drop it. Now, if you like if you if you like um, mild razors, this is a good one to get put in. You know, to to add to your den. If you don't, you might not want one other than you know just to say you got one. Um, but it's just such a really just a smooth, mild shaver, and it's incredibly efficient. I mean, it's more efficient than it is smooth, uh, or mild, I should say. So yeah, it's I I just. I was absolutely amazed when I shaved with it the first time. I'm thinking, oh man, this ain't going to be the greatest of shaves. It's really mild. And then I was like, hey, that knocked it down nice. And the final one is another single edge. It is my very first Artist Club SE razor, and it is this. Right now it is my only Artist Club SE razor. And it is the black anodized aluminum colonial Razors General. This is an Artist Club razor, three piece. In case you're not familiar, you just put the little holes on the, on the Artist Club blade, which kind of looks like a really long injector blade over this, and boom. Put your bottom cap on, screw it on, and boom. Only thing, only problem I have with it is it's got a smooth handle, but I just get my fingers wet, rub them on the Allen block. Anyways, that was my top 10 razors. Now for some honorable mentions. One moment. Um, the honorable mentions, same order as the top 10. Uh, no um, specific order. Uh, you know, you guys, I go ahead and narrow it down to like five. I, props to you. I mean, I've got so many great razors. It's, it was hard. I mean, it was hard um, to come up with the top ten. So, I mean, you know, so that's why I threw in some honorable mentions. Because, I mean, first I tried five, couldn't do that. Then seven, couldn't do that. And I said, well, how about ten? And I was like, because, you know, it's just, I think that's what it was. And then the honorable mentions, I just had to have them. But anyways, um, the first honorable mention goes to, let me find it real quick. Give me a second here. Here it is. Anyways, needs this. If you know, if you've seen my last video, our last, you know, couple of videos back, you know what I'm talking about. And it's in the honorable mention category because it's, 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 they're not the easiest to find. And that's this. Looks like a fat handle tech, but it is not. Take that. This is the key. This is a reproduction key from Razor Emporium. Insert it. Spin it around, top comes off. This is the 1973, or put your blade in there, pop it back on, screw it down, and your blade's locked in. This is the 1973 Gillette Psychotech. In case you've never heard of that razor, it was one that was made by Gillette for institutions. When I say institutions, I mean prisons, mental homes, and hospitals. It was to allow inmates and patients to shave themselves, um, allowing the guards and or orderlies or nurses to um, be able to uh, you know, not be so tied up, and that way they couldn't just take apart the razor and go, you know, you don't want some guy that's that's in prison for really heinous crap to sit there and go, do 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 do. All right, I got a razor blade, man. Now I'm gonna go cut somebody up. Um, it's not as easy to 
injure somebody with a razor blade locked inside a hand, locked inside a razor. So that's the 73 Psychotech. The next arm we'll mention is this one. This is a 1930s Gillette new long comb on the ball end handle. The blade goes on like that, similar to a tech razor, but as you can see, it's got, instead of a little diamond cut out, it's got a slot and the open comb, put it on. This razor gives a really nice, smooth, but real, just a great shape. I really enjoy using it. I've got the British version of that razor as well. The next one is, to my knowledge, the only double edge twist open razor, or the only double edge razor that Schick ever made. And that's this one, the 1965 Schick Corona twist open double edge razor with the black handle. Now, me, I got to kind of make sure because this razor was so frozen up when I got it. Um, it was in the case, had a blade in it, the blade didn't have a spot of rust, nothing on it. But it had been setting so long that this was kind of froze up, and as I was getting it open, something must have popped on the inside. So if I open it too much, this part, the T-bar, and the doors will actually lift up and turn. So I kind of am careful about that. but. And the thing I like about these Coronas, for whatever reason, once you twist that knob closed, it just, the doors don't, the doors don't loosen up. They don't come loose. And it's got this black handle with really neat knurling pattern, just like little dash lines. And kind of makes me think of a, of, a, of a missile with the handle and that. I think it was because of the space race we had going on with Russia, why Schick kind of Got in on the on the missile missile load. Maybe the Cold War had something to do. I don't know, but it's a cool razor. The next honorable mention is this one, the 1912 Ever Ready Flip Top Shovel Head. This was a gift from my girlfriend's one of my girlfriend's really close friends. It was her granddad's or great granddad's. Her son would have never taken care of it. Um, and she knew I would, so she gave it to me with the only stipulation was when I pass on, it goes to my son and it's like, yeah, no problem and never to get rid of it. So that was agreed upon. Almost there guys. The next one is couldn't have honorable mentions without my very first razor. And that's this one. This is the micro touch one twist open butterfly safety razor. This it's just pretty much a rebranded Wishi. Um, you know, kind of looks a little bit like a Gillette flare tip, but it ain't no flare tip. <laughs> I've said before, it ain't no flare tip. Um, pretty, and, and pretty much, you can get it. You know, this was $20. You can pick up for between $15 and $20. The Vanderhagen Racer is pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, uh, but it's not bad. It's not bad. I don't I, I don't mind it at all. I get decent shaves off it. And the last honorable mention is this one. This is the Hydromagic Schick Injector. I think they call it the Schick, the Hydromagic 500 or whatever. Um, or, yeah, I can't remember. It says something on the head. I can't remember what it says back here. But the cool thing about it, now I also have a Type G and... I want to get an ultrasonic cleaner because the head here, if you notice, it's not hard, it's not easy to get in here and the type G and the type E, they have, it's like a loop stirrup stir piece where it goes up underneath and it kind of pinches that head up. And I mean, you can pop it to the side, but it's a mother effer. So just pop that little lever up. And the head falls down and it actually falls down enough where you can kind of 
get a toothbrush up in there. I can. You can at least get part of the bristles up in there. And, and you know, and it cleaned up really nice. When you're done, just flip it up. And it pushes it up and locks it in place. Let's see if it comes down more, shall we? Nope, it doesn't come down anymore. But, yeah. Really nice shaver with these injectors. If you don't have one and you've been thinking about trying one, pick it up. Give it a try. They're cool. Um, they're called injectors. If you ain't familiar with them, they got a little thing, little thing with a key that slides in the side here. Then you got a little thing and it pushes the blade. New blade in, shoves the old blade out. And then you go and it kind of shaves at kind of this angle. So it's kind of out there, but it's a comfortable, smooth shaver for me. Anyways, so that's it. That's my top 10 razors of 2017, along with <laughs> quite uh, several honorable mentions. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and uh, y'all take it easy. I'll go ahead and get a top, a top whatever soaps, and maybe a top, I don't know, three, four brush out, brush, brush video out. Um, anyways. Hope y'all had a great Christmas. Hope y'all have a happy new year. If I don't see you before new year, hope that you have a happy one. And uh, y'all take it easy and I'll see y'all on the flip side of the way. Bye bye now. Hey everybody, I was just editing out the video and I realized I didn't say squat about the general when it comes to how it performs and why it's in my top 10. Anyways, it's in my top 10 because it is such a smooth, efficient, mild shaver. And the beauty of the general is is that, pardon me, that you can dial up the aggression depending on which blade you're using. Um, however, it does not accept the Artist Club Feather Pro Lite. It does not accept that blade. So if you're thinking about getting the General, go ahead, get it. Um, and it's just such an incredible shaver. Um, at least in my opinion is I absolutely love it. I'm glad that it was my first artist club SE razor because it was just such a great experience. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking about getting one, go ahead and get it. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Odds are, um, and that's why it is in my top 10. Anyhow, um, Tonight's New Year's, everybody, uh, drive safe. If you make merry, then, you know, um, get a designated driver if need be. Or if you're going to make merry at home, then, hey, have fun. Or if you do make merry out and about, have fun as well. Just everybody be safe. Um, anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye now.